Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters of Yasharel. I hope that you all are having an amazing, beautiful, glorious, gracious, forbearing, merciful, outstanding, marvelous, fantastic, terrific, <laughs> fabulous, just amazing, amazing evening. This day has been a beautiful to me. The day is turned into now the evening which has begun our new day as Hebrews and has been outstanding for me. So I hope that for my brothers and sisters of Yasharel, that is just the same. It's so amazing. I want to go ahead and move forward into time stamping our day so that we are aware of the day that we're in as this recording is proceeding. Of course, we'll begin by a time step in the day with the Hebrew telling of time, which will be the phase of the moon that we're in that lets us know where we are in our month, as well as the month of the Hebrew year and also the day of that month. We are in the second month of the Hebrew year. It is the 23rd day of the second month of the Hebrew year, and we are in the phase last quarter which means we have one more phase to go through before we hit our phase new moon, which would then start again our next month. Gregorian-wise, it is the first day of the sixth month of the year 2021. It is 8.37 p.m. Central Standard. That is Gregorian Roman Catholic observed time, of course. We know that at evening begins a new day. This evening has just creeped in not too long ago. It was gorgeous. I was just finishing cleaning up the kitchen, coming out from eating my lentils and tomatoes with some unleavened bread. And I saw the the sun setting. It was just beaming off my desk. It was beautiful. So I took a picture and just stared while it was going down. It was was amazing. (laughs) I'm excited about this teaching this teaching may be a little lengthy but i hope that my brethren that are in need of the word or just enjoy hearing the word love the length of this video or this teaching um i'll try not to sound as laid back as i sound but i'm telling you how i sound is exactly how i feel (laughs) i'm chilling y'all i'm chilling I'm chilling. I'm just, I'm very content with where I am in life and it cannot get any better than living for the Lord. I mean, like, it's, it's perfect. Like, it's perfect. I'm not saying my life is perfect. That's not what I'm saying at all. But it's perfect. Like, it can't get any better than knowing the Lord, than having a relationship with Him, than living life with the Lord. Like, I mean, like, (laughs) the true and living Lord. Not the made up fictitious character that everybody think is just it's real. It's just y'all like <laughs> I love the Lord. He's just amazing. He's outstanding. He's he's indescribable. He's beautiful. He's so gorgeous. He's so clear. He's so pure. He's just so perfect. It's it's good. His word is so real. It's so like genuine. It's so tried in a furnace of fire. It it can't be shook. Like who can touch him? Like <laughs> I love him. I love him so, so much. I love him so much. Like, I really do. But anyhow, (laughs) we're going to go ahead and move forward with prayer, okay? Of course, you all know that we have got to move forward in prayer to decrease our flesh and increase in the spirit. So, my brothers, you already know the drill. Please ensure that your head is not covered. Your crown of your head needs to be uncovered. No veiling of the head as a man. You know that your head belongs to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai's head belongs to Yahweh. Keep the order, my brothers and my sisters of Yasharel. Please ensure that your head is covered. Your head belongs to the man, which belongs to Yahweh Shai, which belongs to Yahweh. And as Hebrews that are getting back into the truth so that we can walk into the new kingdom that has been ordained for us everlasting with no end, you've got to keep the order. You've got to keep the order, okay? So let us go ahead now and close our eyes and bow our heads and begin in prayer. Thank you. 
Yahawa Palal Abanawa Shaba Shamayam Kwadash Haya Shamka Yahawa Malakwatka Taba Ratazaka Haya Aisha Baa Rataza Kawahaya Bashamayam Nathan Lanoa Lacham Kalyawam Wasalach Lanoa Hawab Wath Nawa Kasalach Nawa Hawab Wath Yanawa Wala Tabaya Nawa Banasayawan Abal Hawashai Nawa Mayan Rai Kayalaka Hamalakwat Wahala Wahatapawa La Awalam Yam Aman O God My heart is fixed I will sing and give praise Even with my glory And I will sing praises unto thee among the nations, O oh God, my heart is fixed. Thank you, thank you, my brothers and sisters of Yasharel, for staying tuned during prayer with me. You all know that I love me some prayer, so I do appreciate you all staying tuned during prayer. I did want to go ahead and also include that we are in the fourth day of the week. I did forget to mention in the initial introduction, so I'm mentioning it now. <laughs> we are in the fourth day of the week. We're going to be moving over to the book of Luke, chapter 1, and we'll begin in verse 1. If any of my brethren are familiar with this chapter, you do know that there are about 80 verses in total. So this is a pretty lengthy chapter, and we will be reading this chapter in its entirety. There is some very valuable information in here. It touches on Yechanan HaMitzbiel Zalich, or John the Baptist, St. John the Baptist. It touches on St. John the Baptist's parents, which is absolutely amazing. And then also, of course, Yahweh Shai and his mommy, which I absolutely love. And then there's some information that's given or recalled pertaining to the promise made between Abram and Yahweh, which I always love because the thing about a lot of my brethren nowadays because we fail to deeply diligently hear unto the word of the most high which includes you diligently studying deeply his word and not just topical surface reading you fail to realize that the old testament is nothing but a precursor of the new testament they work hand in hand so nothing's changed everything's the same everything spoken about in the old testament was just fulfilled in the new testament so i love I love, absolutely love when there are specific matters that are recalled to just bring back to remembrance that, hey, it's still in existence. What I told you, what I spoke in the Old Testament is still here. I love it. I absolutely love those moments. And it's just like a slap in the face to people that attempt to feed you deception and lies. So I love it. <laughs> so with further ado, I want to go ahead and share chapter one of St. Luke with my brethren, my brothers and sisters. Of Yasharel. So we're going to go ahead and pick up in verse 1 to begin in this reading. We're going to read verses 1 through 4 together because verses 1 through 4 complete an entire thought. At the end of verse 1, we see that it ends in a comma. The end of verse 2 ends in a semicolon. The end of verse 3 
ends in an additional comma. And the end of verse 4 ends in a period. So we know that this statement has come to its completion. In order for us to understand these verses in their entirety, we first need to read them the way that they are written here biblical wise. We will then touch base on some terms that do not mean what we would think they mean in this time. We will be given what those terms mean in the time in which they were written. We will reread these verses and then we'll break it down. Verse 1 reads, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theopolis, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Off the top, we know that verse 1 has some terms and also phrases that are being utilized that don't mean the same thing that we would think they mean in, in common error, the error that we're in right now, okay? You have to take into account that this particular chapter is being written around 37 4 BC. This is way before our time, way before your great, great, great grandmother's time. You understand? So you have to take into account that there are some terms that are being utilized that don't mean what we would think they mean. If we go back over to verse 1, we see the first word in verse 1 is for as much. I know that the majority of my brethren are not utilizing words such as for as much. The word for as much is in equivalence with seeing that or taking into consideration. It's like an opening so that you're, you're engaging with the person that you're speaking to or that you're writing to. That's what this for as much is symbolic of or stands as or is referenced as in our day and time. We have the word hand, which would not mean your left or your right hand. Obviously, remember, we use context clues as well. This word hand in the way that this is being written and emphasized and completing of this thought would mean authority or power. Then we move forward to the group of words to set forth. That would not necessarily mean what we would think it would mean in this day and time, only because of the context around it, as well as what's being spoken in this particular chapter. The group of words to set forth are basically, in other words, saying to put together. Or to broadcast. That's basically what those groups of words or that group of words is saying. And then the last word we have is declaration. <laughs> declaration in this particular verse definitely does not mean what we would think it to mean in this day and time. If I ask my brethren, declaration, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word declaration? It's definitely not narration or the telling of a story. So the term declaration in verse 1 means a narration or the telling of a story. So when you gain an understanding of what terms, groups of words, in particular words that are being utilized in biblical time, considering once again that we are in 37, 4 BC during the writing of this particular, this particular letter, this particular narration, part of the Bible, we have to take into account what these words will mean during that time. So now that we know what these words in specific are saying to us during the dating back of 37 BC, let us gain an understanding of what is being said. So I would try and move forward and read verses one through four one more time 
but with the words plugged in so that we see how it sounds if it were written in our time, okay? Verses 1 through 4 would sound something like this. Seeing that many have taken in authority to broadcast a narration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things, wherein thou hast been instructed. Now when you gain an understanding of a term, a group of words, does it not give you a better understanding of what it is that you are reading? I will continually emphasize and reiterate, this is why the Lord tells you to diligently hearken to his word. You can't be topical and like the surface when you're reading this word. You have to study it. It's deeper than what your physical eye can see. So now let us get an understanding of what's being spoken in verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4 are basically saying... Since there are eyewitnesses of Yahweh Shai's existence here from birth, putting together a narration, a story of Yahweh Shai's time on earth as they're delivering the message of Yahweh Shai, I took in consideration and considered that it was good for me also too to let you know about this story give you an understanding of the story since I have an understanding of this very story from the beginning. I thought it was good that I do the same thing so that you have an understanding with surety the things that you are destined to do in the will of the Most High. We have to understand, and my brothers and sisters of Yasharel, this is just from me to you. We have to understand that the story of Yahweh Shai is well beyond our years, okay? Just as King Solomon has stated to us, as the Holy Spirit has bore witness of his conscience, we know that nothing is new under the sun. The scriptures that we read, we should be able to bear witness to every word in this word, we should be able to bear witness of this by our spirit. Because the words are speaking to our spirit. There is no other nation on this earth that is as nigh unto the Most High as we. I don't care what they tell you. I'm not about to get into that. That is beneath me. I refuse to get into it. But you have to understand that this word is relatable this man just told Theophilus that I thought it was good for me to tell you about the story of Yahweh Shai the same way as eyewitnesses of Yahweh Shai have told his story. I thought it was good that I also tell you this story since I have a good understanding of it from the very beginning. Because I take into consideration that ling lingo changes, things change. Things change. Words that I may use now will not mean what you would use them as in your time. So I'm going to give it to you according to the understanding in my time. The story not going to change. But I'm going to break it down to you so that you understand and comprehend what I'm telling you without changing the meaning of the story. So what I'm, what I'm attempting to get to you, my brothers and sisters of Yasharel. You have to understand that this word is relatable. <laughs> I don't care if you see words such as with a soul, for as much per adventure. This word is relatable. That's why I get amped up out of I don't child, I don't know what words can explain the fire and joy that arouses in my very spirit, in my inner range when I hear this word, because I can relate to it deeply. My spirit deeply bears witness. And when I tell you I would die for the word of the most high, I would die for the word of the most high because I can relate to this word. 
if it ain't nothing else that I can guarantee or promise you in this life, I can guarantee and promise you that this word does what it's intended to do. I ventured out and followed the Lord's voice out into the wilderness and allowed him to lead me back with light. So what I'm attempting to get you all to understand and gain is that this is relatable. We are, we are witnessing, we are reading right now. This man is telling this man that I'm basically, I'm going to, I'm going to feed you this story so that you have an overstanding from where you are. Where I'm, I'm going to break it down to you in layman's terms so I, I know that you get it without changing the meaning of the story. So that your witness can continue, your spirit, my apologies, your spirit can continue to bear witness of this story. And you can keep telling this story to the generations to come so that we can free our people and walk into the kingdom that is set for us, ruled by the very word of the Most High. So I'm just attempting to get y'all to understand that I really... I really need you to understand when I'm on here, it's not for decoration, it's not for play. I really need you to understand the importance of knowing the Lord before it is too late. That is all, that's all I want you to do. To understand it's relatable. Yeah, they use words such as peradventure, whither thou so, betwixt, what, uh, duh. It was written in 37 BC and before that. You can use the word hot in three different ways in this day and time. Same thing. Just a different time. Let us move on to verse 5. Verse 5 reads. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah. A certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife of the daughters of Arian, and her name Elizabeth. As I've mentioned before, knowing the names of people of the Most High that are referenced in specific stories in the scriptures is very important. We reference Zacharias' name. His name means remembered of Yahweh. We move over to Elizabeth's name. Her name means Oath of the Most High. So right off the back, even before we gain a very deep understanding of the roles that they're playing scriptural-wise, we know that from the very meaning of their names, that these two individuals are pretty close to the Most High. Very seen of the Most High. They are acknowledged of the Most High. And that's even before moving forward into reading the scriptural understanding that defines their very meaning in this particular story. In addition to understanding the names of Zacharias and Elizabeth, we are also given the time frame or the era in which this particular part of Yahweh Shai's story takes place. It tells us, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah. In this raggedy, wicked world that we are currently in, the usage of electronics and devices is pretty much right at our fingertips. We are able to utilize the retarded Google. You can utilize Wikipedia. Different things of the sort. But if you're from my time, we utilized encyclopedias, actual books that you carry. <laughs> you can utilize multiple resources and find out the time frame in which Herod, the king of Judah, reigned. You find that he reigned between the time of 37 through 4 BC. So we have... A, a sort of kind of vivid picture, a little bit more vague than anything, but we have a we have a we have a fair picture here of the era that we are in during this speaking of Yahweh Shai's existence. 
Now, I say around 37, 4 BC because we have to take into account that we let every word that man speak be a lie, but the word of the Most High be the truth. We know that in the book of Daniel, the prophet of the Most High, that he tells us that the last beast will look to change laws and times. We know that laws indefinitely times have been changed. The very usage or making or creation construing of the Gregorian calendar consisted of the moving forward or the moving backward of very days in about 11 to 15 days, if I'm not mistaken. So in other words, when the Gregorian calendar came into effect, they either pushed forward the days 15, 11 to 15 days or pushed back the days 11 to 15 days. That would take us into a whole nother teaching. So I'm not going to go into that. But if you do deeper diving, deeper researching, and not just stopping at some information that someone gives you, including myself, you will see this for yourself. So as I mentioned, we are around the time of 37 to 4 BC. And again, I say around the time because we have to take into consideration that times and laws have been changed according to the book of Daniel. But not only that, when we move forward in the book of St. Luke, Luke, my apologies, St. Luke, we understand that there are other occurrences that take place and there are other individuals in whom days we are given. So we have to pretty much correlate the time frame that we are in to see which one gives us the closest range, which one is right there in the median, okay? So again, based on the information given here, we know that we are around 37 to 4 BC. Now moving forward, it reads, A certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. Abiah Abiah's name means my father is Yahweh, okay? Abiah was the eighth in order of the priestly family whom King Dawit divided into 24 classes. If you don't recall that story, you have to go back in the word in the time in which King Dawid reigned, which would be the stories of 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings. You'd want to be around that time if you need deeper understanding of the dividing. But we move forward once again, reiterating that it says a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. So we know that this priest named Zacharias was only appointed a certain amount of days during Abiah's order of priestly priesthood. Okay? And then we move forward and it reads, And his wife of the daughters of Arian, and her name Elizabeth. We know who Arian is. That was Masha's brother. Arian was the, he was the head of the priestlyhood. He was the first priest. So it's letting you know that this daughter, Elizabeth, she descended from the lineage of priests. And then once again, we're speaking of a certain man named Zacharias, who is a priest. So when you just break down this verse with just, just verse 5, allowing the Lord's word to break down itself for you, we understand that their names indeed do have meaning. <laughs> and that their relationship with the Most High is indeed a very close relationship. These individuals are definitely acknowledged of the Most High because if she descend, descended from a priest lineage or a line of priests, and he is a priest, we know that these two kept the laws of the Most High. And we know that those that keep the laws of the Most High are considered to be what in the eyes of the Most High? You are righteous, blameless, blemish free. We know this. So again, even before we get deeper into moving forward into out of, and I'm so sorry, into verse six, we know what role these two are going to play. This is why I tell you, I'll keep reiterating. I don't care if it gets on your nerves. You have to hearken diligently to the word of the most high. You can't surface read his word. 
He's deep. <laughs> His days are like are like droplets to a sea. You can't number them. He's ancient of times. Can you tell him how deep the ocean is? Can you tell him how he congealed the depths of the sea? Can you tell him the circuits in which the raindrops fall through? The very circuit that the that the moon and the sun, the course that the moon and the sun runs. Can you tell him these things? So what makes you think that you could just you can just you can topically read surface read his very word? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it is a very, very relatable story. My brethren that feel me, that if you can feel me, glory be to the most high. I got one at least. And if you are that one, I am talking to you. You are the reason that the Lord is continually pushing me to get on here. Let's move forward into verse 6. Verse 6 reads, and they were both righteous before the Most High, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahweh, blameless. So we just broke down verse 5. We got a load of valuable information from verse 5. We know the error in which this particular telling of Yahweh Shai's existence is taking place. We know about Zacharias. We know the set appointed time that he was a priest. We even know that there is a woman, Elizabeth, that descends from the very lineage of Ariane, meaning that indeed she is a Levite. She is from the tribe of Levi. So we have some very valuable information. But when you read verse 6, and it lets you know that these two were both righteous before the Most High, that just gives backbone to their very existence. And then also, when I mention that these two are definitely acknowledged of the Most High, it tells you why they were acknowledged of the Most High. It tells you why they were righteous before the Most High. It breaks down to you what the Lord considers to be righteous. It tells you the definition of what the Most High considers to be righteous. It reads, and they were both righteous before the Most High, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahweh, blameless. This is in the New Testament. Mind you, the Old Testament is nothing but a precursor of the New Testament. Hey, nothing changed. It's a continuation of the same story, the same exact story. It only changes when individuals are attempting to have some type of upper hand or supersede utilizing deception. That's the only time it changes. But when that takes place, you get in the world on your own. You don't take what somebody else is giving you. I don't care if it's me. I tell you all, all the time, make sure you have your Bibles on hand. So it's letting you know that walking in all the commandments and ordinances, a.k.a. laws of the Most High, is what the Lord sees as righteous, as blameless in his eyes. This is when he acknowledges you. So when you ask someone, well, what do you do to make the Lord notice you, acknowledge you, see you? Oh, you know, yeah, I was, I was being nice to this person today. Or oh, I paid for somebody groceries in the line. No, what do you do to make the Lord acknowledge you? What gives you a close-knit relationship with the Lord? Not your interpretation. Here you have, my brethren, the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 6. It is the walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahweh that has the Most High seeing you as righteous and blameless. And there are additional precepts all over this word that line this overstanding up that there my brethren my brothers and sisters of Yasharel, this is the defining of what makes you righteous before the most high it's simple we move forward into verse 7 which reads and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren 
and they both were well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before the Most High in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Most High. So we'll pause right here just to kind of give you a rundown in the case that any of my brethren are not following due to the terminology that's being utilized. This part is just basically letting you know that Zacharias and Elizabeth are old. They're elderly. They're old in age, okay? And in addition, it's letting you know that moving forward into this particular telling of this story, that Zacharias, his role or the role that he plays, his duty as a priest is to burn incense when he goes into the temple of Yahweh. We move forward into verse 10, which reads, And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of Yahweh standing on the right side of the altar of incense. We'll pause here for a moment. At this time, Verses 10 through 11 are basically saying, at the time when Zacharias enters into the temple of Yahweh to light the incense, that there are a multitude of people outside of the temple of Yahweh praying. And by multitude, I mean so many people that you cannot number them. It's letting you know that when he enters into the temple of Yahweh, that an angel appears unto him on the right side of the altar. We move forward into verse 12, which reads, And when Zacharias saw, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. I want to pause to place a thought into the heads of my brethren. When we read about the occurrences of our forefathers, our foremothers, our prophets, that encounters angels sent from the Most High, they are all always scared, struck with fear, struck lifeless, have to be touched by that angel to be brought back to life. I want you to consider these moments and I want you to think deeply on this particular occurrence and then the others just like it. I want you to ask yourself specific questions like, what is the image of these angels? What is the frequency that these angels are giving off? <laughs> How do these angels move? When they appear, do they just miraculously appear? Or are they walking into the room? I want you to think about things like this. Like get deep when you are studying this word. You have to really sit and diligently hearken to the voice of the Most High. Now, as I stated, I'm not about to get too, too deep into the concept of an occurrences of angels sent from the Most High because that will open up a new teaching. And if the Lord says the same, of course, we'll touch on it at a later time. But we're strictly, we're touching on this specific teaching at this moment. We move forward into verse 13 that reads, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Yechanan. This angel just told Zacharias that his prayer is heard. According to this particular chapter, this verse here in Luke, we know that his prayer is heard, and we know the character of this very man. And if you refer back to Proverbs and even Psalms, we know that only the prayers of the righteous are the prayers that the Most High hears. That the prayers of the wicked, he does not even hear them. He does not even take second thought to consider them. So for this man's prayer to not only be heard, but be answered and then also have an angel sent down to relay a message of your prayer being heard. You have to understand the importance of these beings that Yahweh is choosing to partake in the role of the story of Yahweh Shai. 
It's very important, my people, that we take these things into consideration. We move forward into verse 14, which reads, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of Yahweh, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. <laughs> That's <is> deep. <laughs> that is deep. Moving forward. And many of the children of Yashorel shall he turn to Yahweh, their father. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh Shai. Hmm. I want to break down verses 16 through 17 momentarily. Briefly, rather, I should say. I apologize. It's telling you that Yohanan's very role, it just gave you what John the Baptist, what St. John the Baptist's role is here when he was on earth. This was his role. He was to go before him, whom is Yahweh Shai, in the spirit and power of Elias or Elijah, in which we know Elijah is spoken about in 1st, 2nd Samuel, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh Shai. That is the role of John the Baptist. Hamith Biel Zadik Shachanan. That is his role. This was his very role. This is why this man was great in the sight of Yahweh. This is why this man was filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's very womb. This is how this man is able to, to turn many children of Yasharel, turn their hearts to Yahweh. This is why. Because this is his very role. If this is the very role that he played, do you think that his role here, that his very existence here is for decoration? No. He had a very big role. To make ready people prepared for Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Yahweh Shai, the very word of the Most High in a body on this earth. He has a very big role. You got to take these things into consideration. He didn't just give Yechanan to a, a mother, a whore, a harlot during this time. A woman playing the whore. A man who is of low degree. He gave this seed <laughs> unto Zacharias, who is a priest. To be born from the womb of Elizabeth. Of a lineage of priests. You got to understand this word. <laughs> you got to understand this is not nothing to play with, my brethren. You have to understand just the beauty, the authority, the power of the word of the Most High. Of his very, his very order. You got to understand this. And it's really, it oh my goodness. Let's move forward into verse 18. Verse 18 reads, And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of the Most High, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak unto the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So basically, verses 18 through 20 are basically saying, so Zacharias basically asked the angel Gabriel, what is going to occur for me to know that this is really going to happen? This angel tells him who he is. I'm Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of the Most High. And since you don't believe me and you need a sign, this is the sign. You're not going to be able to speak until Yohanan is brought forth. <laughs> until Elizabeth gives birth unto this seed, this son that I've given you information on. That I've been sent to give you glad tidings on. That's basically what this is saying. Verse 21 reads, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. 
for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. Ministration is basically a service that priests perform that, that consists of basically prayer and sacrifices unto Yahweh. Okay? Moving forward into verse 24. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath Yahweh dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on to take away my reproach among men. You have to take into consideration. Remember, Zacharias is dumb right now. <laughs> he can't talk. He can't talk. So it just advised us that Elizabeth has conceived during this time. It is now five months she's hiding herself. This man is still dumb, y'all. <laughs> he still can't talk. Moving forward into verse 26, it reads, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from the Most High unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Yosef, of the house of Dawid, and the virgin's name, Mary. Now, verse 27 is a very important verse, okay? This verse here, <laughs> it, is, it is the most simple explanation of, of the type of virgin that Mari is, okay? So just like we've been given definitive on what the Most High considers to be righteous and blameless in his eye, using his word, we're also going to use the word of the Most High to break down virgin in this verse. Now, we're not going to get too deep into this particular teaching because this is actually going to be a teaching that will proceed forward in Luke chapter 3. That should be upcoming, if the Lord says the same, of course. But, reading verse 27, it reads, To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Yosef of the house of Dawid, and the virgin's name Mari. This just gave you the definition of virgin, okay, in this verse. In this describing of Mari. It just it, plain and simple. Okay. And I'm saying plain and simple because again, of course, I know the story of Mari. I know the story of Yahweh Shai. Utilizing scripture, common sense. And then also breaking down and overstanding the very story of the Most High. Again, common sense. And not only that, using reference of Blue Letter Bible, additional common sense. But I, I feel like the easiest thing is just, it's right here in your face. It says to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Virgin in this sense is a merry, ageable maiden, a betrothed woman. That's basically what a virgin is. Okay. And like I said, we're not going to touch too deep into this particular topic because this is going to be a teaching that will be based in chapter three. Of the book of Luke in which we will be touching on if the Lord says the same but I just wanted to put that bug in the ear right now okay moving forward to verses 28 it reads and the angel came in unto her and said hell highly favored Yahweh with thee blessed thou among women and when she saw she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. Verse 32 proceeds forward and reads, He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And Yahweh the Most High shall give unto him the throne of his father Dawid. And he shall reign over the house of Yaquab forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Pause right here. Have we not briefly touched continually on the fact that the Old Testament is a precursor of the New Testament? Is not verses 32 through 33 a reiteration of the very promise between the Most High 
in King Dawood. We touched on the promise between Yahweh and King Dawood in the teaching of the Southern and Northern Kingdoms. Let us go ahead and reference back in this very promise so that we can touch on something right quick. We're turning our Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. We will read verses 12 through 16. Verse 12 reads, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Yahweh has made a covenant with King Dawid. In this covenant, is in verse 16 explicitly, which reads once again, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. We move back up into verse 12, and we read a specific part which reads, Which shall proceed out of thy bowels. This is speaking about the organs of procreation, okay? The organs of procreation is what this is saying. And we know this because if we proceed and move forward and use context clues, it is speaking about a son. Okay? So Yahweh has made a covenant that the throne, the very kingdom of Dawid shall be established forever. Yahweh even says in addition to this very covenant that he will establish his throne forever and he will be the father of the individual whom will sit on the throne of King Dawid forever. We come back over to Luke. We reread verses 32 through 33, which read, He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And Yahweh the Most High shall give unto him the throne of his father Dawid. And he shall reign over the house of Yaquab forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Is this not the recalling of the covenant that Yahweh made with King Dawid? Oh my goodness, it is not that hard, my people. It ain't that hard. It is not that hard. My brethren, we know with the surety, with the utilization of scriptures, that Yahweh Shai sprang out of Yula. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. We'll touch on chapter 7, verse 14. I have to get there. Chapter 7, verse 14 of the book of Hebrews reads, for evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Masha spake nothing concerning priesthood. <laughs> right here in your face. We know that with the surety utilizing scripture, that Yahweh Shai was not an angel. Because it simply tells you here in the same book, the book of Hebrews, but we'll turn to chapter one, verse five reads, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. It is blatantly telling you, Yahweh has never called an angel his son. So we know with the surety that Yahweh Shai is not an angel. He sprang out of Judah. He is from the lineage of Dawid. He came from a fleshy seed. It blatantly tells you here in verse 27. To a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Yosef of the house of Dawid and the virgin's name Mary. My brethren, you have got to pay attention to these things so that these pre-existing lies do not deter your overstanding of the word of the Most High, which is right here in your face, right at your fingertips. 
Let us move forward into verse 34. Verse 34 reads, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Most High. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with the Most High nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of Yahweh, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Bless thou among women and bless the fruit of thy womb. And whence this to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from Yahweh. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Most High, and my spirit hath rejoiced in the Most High, my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy his name, and his mercy on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shewed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He had hoped in his servant Israel in remembrance of mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. One moment. <laughs> Let us pause right quick. This is telling you. Verse 50. It reads. In his mercy on them that fear him from generation to generation. My brethren. What is it that instills the reverence. The reverential fear of the most high in you. From generation to generation, from your child to their child to their child. What is it? It's the law of the Most High. It's the law of the Most High. And you not keeping the law of the Most High is you forgetting the Most High. When you out there stealing, out there being covetous, out there being a whoremonger, out there being homosexuals, out there being gluttonous, not keeping the Shabbat, treating your brethren with disrespect, belittling your very being. This is you forgetting the Lord because you're not taking into consideration that he tells us, no, don't be gluttonous. No, don't be homosexual. Remember the Shabbat, keep it holy. That is you forgetting the Lord. So his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. And in order for you to fear him from generation to generation. You've got to keep his commandments. Keep his law. Keep his statute. Keep his word alive in you. And teach your children. So that they can teach their children. You train up a child in the way that you want them to go. And they will not depart from that way. I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you because the word said it. That's how I know. But then we move on down. Verses 54 through 55 read. He has hope in his servant Yashorel in remembrance of mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. This is basically saying Yahweh has helped Yasharel through the remembrance of his mercy, just as he promised he would 
to our forefathers and to Abraham. Yahweh has not forgotten about Yasharel. This is blatantly telling you the very woman that Yahweh chose to bear the seed of Yahweh Shai. She's letting you know he ain't forgot about Yasharel. This ain't about any other nation. <laughs> it's not. He ain't forgot about us. Now, it's unfortunate that a lot of us have forgotten about him. But he ain't forget about us. His word does what it's intended to do. His word is his very covering. He keep his word. He exalts his word above his name. He is a righteous being. His righteousness is prophesied and spoken about from our very prophets. From the Old and New Testament. He ain't forget about us. That's basically what it's telling you. I want us to turn over to the book of Isaiah and touch on chapter 25 and verse 9, which reads, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this our creator, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This Yahweh, we have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We move over to the same book, chapter 40 of Isaiah. Verse 8, which reads, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Creator shall stand forever. We move over to chapter 45 of Isaiah, same book, verses 4 through 6, which read, For Yaquab my servant's sake, and Yashorel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, Though thou hast not known me, I, Yahweh, and none else, no deity beside me, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that none beside me, I, Yahweh, and none else. We move over to the last precepts that I want to touch on. Found in the same book, Isaiah. Verses 14 through 16 in chapter 49 read. But Zion said, Yahweh hath forsaken me, and Yahweh hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yeah, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of hands, thy walls continually before me. Yahweh is blatantly telling the children of Yasharel, the seed of Abraham, from even the very beginning, that even though we as a stupid, stiff-necked, thick-headed people forget him, he has not forgotten us. And we know from the other usage of precept that his word is not going to fade. <laughs> and we know that in addition to that, he is going to save us. He is our very salvation. This is our hope. The Lord has not forgotten Yasharel. He tells us in his very word. See, we lose so much hope as a people from what we've come from overall. And let me tell you, my people, I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it from the iniquity, the sin, the wickedness, the unrighteousness, the covetedness, the lusts, the fleshy fulfillments. I get it. <laughs> but when you plant yourself in this word, it gives you an, a whole nother feeling. It fills you in places you didn't even know needed feeling because you didn't even know they were there. The Lord has loved Yasharel before Yasharel even became Yasharel. The Lord chose Yasharel even before Yasharel existed. The Lord ain't forgot about us. He ain't overlooking us for no other nation. He see the way that we are mistreated. 
since the very beginning, since we can recall. And we are in the year of 2021, so I know a lot of us are not even that old. But I know we can look back on how our people have been treated. The main thing that we love to recall is slavery. There have been multiple occurrences other than just slavery. Our people have been neglected, <laughs> treated like we are something that, that child, I can't even express to you in words that can comprehend the way that we have been treated. When I tell you Edom is mad, <laughs> that, that being is mad. His seed is angered. At the very choosing of the most high. At the very rule. The very order of the most high. And it's taking it out on his very heritage. Not taking into consideration. That we're not going to be sleep forever. That this is not going to occur forever. That he has already let it be known. That you are going to serve us. So for you to do the foolishness that you are doing. Thinking that this is going to last everlasting. Even though you know that your heritage will be laid waste. You know that the Lord has forever indignation against you. And you know that the kingdom to come will have no end. And you will be at the bottom. This is how you act. My people listen. <laughs> I know. It is easy to fall victim of the flesh. I know. I know. I used to be out there doing the same foolishness. Probably more foolishness than you are doing. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but I loathed the individual that I used to be. Because when I got into this world. I knew who I wanted to serve for the very remaining of my very being on this earth. I don't care how my people's, you know, my friends that I used to hang with call me lame child. I could care less. And see, on the flip side, the people I used to chill with really want to be around me now. But I don't want to be around them. You get into this word and you realize how real his word is, how genuine it is, how it has held up from the very beginning And you realize with just small references like that, that are, they're small because they're just words. We just see them on this on this paper as words, but they're so meaningful, so relatable, so fulfilling to your very spirit. The Lord said he didn't forget Yashorel. He didn't forget us. He ain't forgot us. This should make you jump up and scream for joy. <laughs> he haven't forgot us. A lot of Israel have forgotten him, but he have not forgotten us. He has likened our existence unto him as a mother with a suckling. That's a breastfeeding mother. A breastfeeding mother don't forget the very infant that she's breastfeeding. Your very body won't allow you to forget the very infant that you're breastfeeding because your breasts begin to leak milk. Goodness gracious, this Lord loves his people. And what's so fulfilling about his love, it don't matter what you do. You turn around and you repent for the things that you have done. And begin to walk out the will of the Lord and just worship him by, by following his commandments and his statutes. <laughs> do you know the things that he does for you in life? I'm a walking testimony. I'm telling you from living it. I don't know how else to speak the, the joy that I find in knowing the Lord and him knowing me. Yo, he has not forgotten us. He ain't forget us. He said he did not forget us. <laughs> he said he didn't forget us, my people. Let's move on. Verse 57 in the book of Luke chapter 1 reads... And it's actually 56. My apologies. Verse 56 reads. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth the son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how Yahweh had shewed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. 
And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not, but he shall be called Yachan. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table, and wrote, saying, His name is Yachanan. And they marveled all. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue, and he spake and praised the Most High. And fear came on all that dwelled round about them. <laughs> and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judah. And all they that heard laid up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? <laughs> and the hand of Yahweh was with him. Glory be to the Most High. Now these next remaining verses that will complete this chapter are a beautiful fulfilling and recalling of the promise that Yahweh made unto Abraham. So verse 67 reads, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Bless Yahweh the Most High of Yisrael, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant Dawid. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our Father, whereby the day sprang from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his shoeing unto Yasharel. So verses 68 through 79 are basically saying, bless the most high. <laughs> Bottom line, bless the most high. He has kept his word. Okay. He kept his word. Bless the most high. He has kept his word by fulfilling his promise of raising up a savior for Yasharel out of the house of Dawit to save us from our enemies and from those that hate us so that we can serve him in holiness and righteousness without fear, just as he promised his holy covenant to Abraham and his covenant with Dawit. He did not forget. <laughs> he did not forget. He has raised us up a savior, y'all. He have not forgotten us. That is basically what this is saying. Bless the most high. He has sent us a savior. Our king is going to save us. <laughs> this is basically what this is saying. He kept his word, the same word that he has had our prophets speak unto us since the beginning. It is manifesting right before our eyes. <laughs> That's basically what this is saying. If you don't remember anything else, just remember that the Lord has not forgotten us as children of Yashorel, as the heritage of the Most High. Okay? You have to blindside yourself to all of the lies, the pre existing deception that has been put in place in the order of the Most High because His Word does what it's intended to do. All right. If you are worthy of being that he considers worthy to receive his love everlasting, you will understand this word. I can guarantee you because the word says so <laughs> because his very word says so. And I believe every single word in the scriptures, every single word. OK, so if you don't remember anything else, just remember that the Lord has not forgotten you. All right. You need to be deeply in the word. Studying this word deeply, repetitiously, continually, perpetually with no stop. 
This needs to become your very life. When you look at the words in the Bible, you need to want, you have, you have to have the desire to be- want to become the word that is making up the words that you see on this very page. Because when I read the Bible, I open the Bible, I be wanting to eat the page. I know it, sound, <laughs> it probably sound like, what? Wait, where did she just go? But I be wanting to just like eat the page. I want to become the very word on this page. I love the Lord. My people, I can't even explain to you all how much I love the Lord. Like words could never fathom. The only way that I can show and replicate the love that I have for the love. I'm sorry. The love that I have for the Lord. The only way that I can show the love that I have for the Lord is by following his commandments and his statutes. That's the only thing I can do. I can't do more than that. If I could do more, I I would. But there is absolutely nothing that I could do that would impress him. I am a mere raggedy, dusty flesh. That's all I am. That's all I am. I came to the end of myself a long time ago. A long time ago, you all. And I knew that this was the walk that I wanted to venture on. And when I tell you it is, it's an adventure, it's fulfilling. It is the best voyage that I have ever been on in my existence in this stupid flesh. Okay. I love the Lord. And I want you all to have the same desire and drive and fire for the Lord. So stay in your word deeply and diligently hearken to the word of the most high because it is still existing i don't care what nobody tells you and yasharel that is the 12 tribes of yasharel he have not forgotten us our savior yahweh shai he is for the children of yasharel not the whole world as yahweh wills we will be back on to touch on an additional teaching that will be just as illuminating (laughs) but i'm about to go in here and go eat some lentils and tomatoes and unleavened bread (laughs) and some potatoes and hopefully if my lamb chops have thawed out i can go ahead and season and put them into the oven to try and cook those as well but i'm gonna go ahead and upload this teaching and i do hope once again that my brethren of israel enjoy As always, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Never cease prayer, bind and loose, and always live ready. I will talk to you all as Yahweh wills. Bye!